far rim of the cup and bring it up, it'll go down a lot faster. <laughs> but you can do it anyway. So, anyway, uh, it was back in 1783 in France that man flew for the very first time. And when man flew for the very first time, it wasn't in a hang glider, it wasn't uh, by flapping his arms and jumping off a cliff or anything like that. When man flew for the very first time, it was in a hot air balloon. Right? And uh, in 1783, there were these two brothers by the name of Montgolfier. And in fact, in Europe, balloons are still called Montgolfiers. Um, so they, these two brothers, one, gosh, I almost have to stand up to do the, all this. There are two brothers, uh, one cold winter night, had their girlfriends over to the chateau for a little wine and entertainment. And they had come in from the cold, and they noticed that as the mademoiselles were warming themselves by the fire, that their skirts would go up. All right. So this gave them uh, some ideas, and uh, they were sort of scientists as well as being paper makers, uh, paper manufacturers to the king. So they thought if we, if we make a great big bag, paper bag, and we fill it with smoke, because they thought it was the smoke that was making the girls' skirts rise, if we fill it with smoke, and it would go up like the skirts went, we could attach something underneath that, and we could go up in the air with it. That was pretty clever, I think. So anyway, so anyway, they, um, they said, um, they went ahead and uh, they built this thing, and they, they hooked it up uh, to a couple of poles, and they built a pit, and they uh, split a fire in the pit, and they had a platform there that had a hole in the center, so the fire could come up through the, the platform and into the, into the envelope. And, and sure enough, you know, uh, it filled up, and it was straining at the ropes, and they were getting ready to go. And the one monk off the eight brother says to the other one, yeah, get on. And the other guy says, you get on. So they thought, mm, yeah, this might be dangerous. Um, so what do we do when we don't want to endanger human life, but we want to experiment? Well, we experiment on animals, all right? So they got themselves a chicken and a duck and a pig and a goat. And they put them on uh, a sheep, I guess it was. Sheep. So, and they put it on the platform, and it was, the ropes were hot, and they cut the ropes, and it went up, and it went over the French countryside, and it came down, and it was pretty much a successful flight, except the pig fell over on the duck, or on the chicken, and, and killed him. And that was aviation's first fatality. So, it, in general, they thought it had gone pretty well, and so that night, over their chicken dinner, uh, they decided that, uh, well, do this again. So they, they set it up again the next weekend and, and they had it all the fire going and the smoke and all this and the straining at the ropes and, and one McGuffey brother and they, they, they still didn't have the courage to get on this thing and go up in the air. But, uh, you know, they had seen what happened to the chicken. Right? So they said, well, uh, let's get somebody that if something happens, it, it won't matter if they're, if they're killed. Let's go get a prisoner out of the jail. So they go get a prisoner and they bring him kicking and screaming over to the basket and the platform. And they're about ready to cut the ropes when who shows up but the King of France. And the King of France says, Oh, no, 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 mes amis, you cannot give the honor of the first flight to a common prisoner. I thought he had a lot about it. Hey, he's right, this could, this, this could go down in history. So, uh, I'm to talk here. So, uh, uh, they took the prisoner back to the jail, and the Montgolfier brothers looked around and said, well, let's ask for volunteers. So, it was an election year in France, so who volunteers but two politicians, right? And these two politicians, the Marquis de Lorange and the Marquis Rouget, Palat de Rouget, uh, got on the basket, they had the flame going, and they cut the ropes, and off they went over the French countryside, and it, they landed, and they were safe, which is amazing, because they had no control. I mean, they went up, and whenever it came down, it came down, you know, and no hitting the burner to, to break or anything. So they landed, they were safe, there was a big celebration, the King of France was there, Benjamin Franklin was there uh, for that first flight, 
Uh, so uh, they started doing this on a regular basis, uh, and there were other people made their own balloons and stuff. But they had a problem, all right? And the problem was that when they would come out of the sky, belching smoke and, and coming down on the French countryside, the peasants would see this, and they thought it was a dragon come to destroy their crops or steal their daughters or whatever, you know? And so they would come out with pitchforks and rakes and tear up the balloon and, and, and ruin the balloon. So the French, they said, well, we've got to do something to prevent this from happening. So they said, well, we're French, we drink champagne, the peasants like champagne, we'll, we'll carry champagne with us. So they would come out of the sky and the peasants would come up with their pitchforks and so forth, and, they, and the balloonists would say, no, no, we're, we're your friends, we're going to have some champagne. <laughs> and the peasants would help uh, pack up the envelope and put it back in the trailer and the and basket, and they'd all go back to the park and, and the party. And we've been drinking and carrying champagne with us ever since. So the Irish got word of this, right? and and they they said, well, here's a great sport. Here's a sport where you can drink before breakfast. All right. So the Irish are known for a couple of things. They're known for their drinking, and they're known also for their prayers. So they said, um, if you'll give us some of your champagne, we'll share one of our Irish prayers with you. And so that was the deal. So they did. So. Um, that's off. The prayer goes like this. The winds have welcomed you with softness. The sun has blessed you with its warm hands. You have flown so high and so well that God has shared in your laughter and placed you gently back into the loving arms of Mother Earth. You may have your champagne now. No hands. No hands. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't see that one coming, did you? <laughs> you don't have to drink the whole thing all at once. <laughs> Very good. The only now, purpose of that is so to get your hands out of the way and get your head down so we can dump champagne on you. <laughs> it's all right, Julia. You can use your hands now. Bottle is on my head. Super Bowl. It's very, it's very good for styling your hair. Yeah, take a few to get your hair clean. No, we don't have the conscious skills. You don't have to use mousse now or anything like that. This will oh, do, do a great job of styling your hair. Here, have another one, Julie. No, it's okay. They knew that was coming. Cool. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we got it last year. We got it last year. <laughs> last year. Well, we're still not done. Can we get up? We you can get up. Yes. Make yourself we smart. follow orders. We, you told us to don't do anything until, until you, we tell you tell us. Don't. Simon says. <laughs> okay. So, I'll give you one of our Shari Gallup balloon cards. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have one? And we have our lovely Shari Gallup balloon pins. Oh. Oh.